welcome back to Abort Retry Fail. This is poor Brenton, and I am at the end of my rope. I had to take a couple steps back and screw up a number of times. It's I can't tell you how many times I've recorded this session, but it turns out this game is a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. A lot of things are time-based, so I'm not going to waste any time talking here. I'm going to start getting into business. I've learned a number of things just by screwing up over and over again. If I'd followed the path that I took during the last playthrough, I would have missed a very important phone call, which should probably be happening pretty... There it is right now. You hear the phone ringing. Um, if I'd proceeded to town to look around and try and get frozen pizzas, which we all know Mike Dawson loves so much, then I would have missed this call and then would not have been able to beat the game. So thankfully, um, I know that now, and I know that I have to be here so that Mike Dawson can pick up the phone. And there's also something else in the house that I should have looked at. Here we go. Hello. Hello. Hello, Mike. This is Sue at the library. We have a book on hold for you, so please drop by sometime. See, Mike, I told you she had the hots for you. You just kind of, like, jumped in too soon. Now, if we only had something that we could use to break the ice. Oh, you know what that is? All right, so check it out. This coat that we looked at in the first episode that he said that he didn't want to have anything to do with. You really don't want to wear such a heavy old coat. All right, fine. Um, try exclamation marking it. You see the old trench coat. You wouldn't be caught dead in that. So any rational person would be like, okay, that trench coat's not for me. I'm gonna walk away. But no, this game wants you to exclamation mark it once again. There's a bulge in the pocket of the trench coat. All right, now we're starting to get somewhere. Now I can finger the coat. Go on ahead, Mike. You've been wanting to finger that coat the moment you I laid eyes on it. Go ahead. Ha <laughs> ha! You reach in the pocket and find a small piece of paper. Gorgeous. Let's take a look at it. Let's question mark it. Lord of the Rings. Ah, it's an overdue library card. That should come in handy. So, without further ado, let's go to the library. Where we'll actually get some things done. I hope. I think. I still haven't read any walkthroughs or anything. I've just screwed up over and over again and died for no apparent reason. And uh, apparently you cannot be outside after dark because uh, Mike Dawson has a narcolepsy problem and will fall asleep in the street, have all of his things stolen, and sometimes wake up in jail even. So you have to make sure you get back home and get to bed by around 9 or 10 o'clock. Maybe the cutoff's midnight. Uh, I try not to risk that too much unless I have to. Sorry if this is all going very fast, but I have about... I played this game for about two hours in between the last two updates, and um, I've died an awful lot. It's getting quite frustrating, but I'm not going to give up on this game. I'm not going to board it. I'm not going to fail it. I'm going to retry. And that's what you're witnessing. Hey, Barber Joe. Still cutting the same dude's hair? Keep on trucking. Into the library. What do you say, Mike? Maybe this time we can make that snooty-ass uh, librarian talk to you for a minute. No, come on. Don't keep on turning around. Show your library card. Oh, and she is a pretty lady. This card really should be kept with the book. You'll find that one in aisle C. It's the one with the green cover. Now, wait a minute. We just looked at the library card, and it was The Return of the King. And that was by J.R.R. Tolkien. There's not a C anywhere in either the title of that book or in the author's name of the book. Why would it be in C? Why? Why, why, why? Oh, it don't matter. It doesn't matter. Wait, what the hell is this? Like, can we pick it up? Is it a bug? It's a bobby pin. Amazing. Can we finally, like, open up a proper, like, conversation with the book mistress if we show her the bobby pin? No. The bobby pin will do nothing to the librarian. Fantastic. Alright. Back to the task at hand. 
There's always just so much pressure because you have no idea how many hours are left in the day if you're not around the clock that's in the house. And, uh, like I said, if you're wandering around and it's too late in the day, you'll just fall asleep and basically lose the game. So, it's a green book. Book with a green cover. This one? Oh, okay. Nice. Nothing of interest. Here's the paper. What is it? Ooh, I get to read. I love reading. I know that I am doomed, so I will hide the pieces of this journal for someone to find later, and hopefully solve the mystery which has baffled me. In the midst of my certain dread that something terrible is happening to me, I had a light moment the other night when old man Tuttle grabbed the key to my clock and swallowed it. What a joker. <coughs> that sounds... Oh, that makes sense. Imagine how shook I was to learn that the old guy had a stroke only a week later. It occurred to me that I may need to retrieve that key to service the clock. I can get it, if I have the guts. Pressing left above right will get me in. Another thing on my mind is the whole thing with... And it cuts off. So, earlier, when we were taking a scenic tour of the cemetery, or the cemetery, as I should call it, um, we saw the Tuttle too, so that's where Old Man Tuttle is, and so obviously there is something there that should be left above and right. Hopefully I don't forget it before then. Um, just go ahead and remind me if I do forget. Wait, she told us... Wait, let me go back in there. Because she called us up on the phone and said that we had a book on hold for us, which is highly suspect to begin with. Maybe I need to actually talk with her. But old Mike here, he's just so bashful. He, he doesn't know what to do with around women. He doesn't know what to do. And do you have, um, sure your crowbar? Maybe she'll like that. Nah, the crowbar doesn't have any effect on the librarian. <sighs> Can I touch her? Ooh, I touched her, it worked. Yeah, Mike. Oh, look at that. Hi, Mike. Here's the book that was put on hold for you. Holy crap, it worked. I'm so stoked. Really gave her a back massage really quick and she opened up and she's like, oh, here, have a book. What? What? I can barely read that. This is really low res on my screen. You've traveled great distances in order to... Oh, okay. Tune in to the right station for a dependable word from beyond. I think that's what it said. I'm sure that was highly cromulent information. Well, I'll tune into the right station, so we had to maybe turn the radio of the car on. Maybe that was supposed to be some sort of obtuse ass hint. Who knows? Daylight's burning. Let's get out of here. I have a feeling that we don't need anything else in the library for now. Let's head back. Let's see if we can get into the tunnel tomb and get that key to the clock. And then maybe there'll be, like, a Master Sword inside of the clock. And that way, our hero, Mike Dawson, can finally wield the Master Sword the way that it was meant to be. Slay everyone in town. And, um, get all sorts of rupees that he could, so he could buy, like, um, like the blue armor with. Or, it's, man, it's been a long time since I've played Zelda. Didn't he, like, get a blue ring or something that gave him special armor? I don't know. Ah, <sighs> just can't get enough of these trees. Back past our amazing house. Come on, Mike. Ain't got all day. More amazing trees. Sometimes I wish that trees in real life only had two colors to the bark. That'd be pretty swell. And back in the cemetery. No time to look at gravestones tonight, Mike. We got a mission. We have a mausoleum to break into. There we go. The Tuttle Tomb. Oddly enough, um, I played a couple other games that these guys put out, and 
Tuttle is a recurring name, so I'm guessing one of the programmers or producers of somebody was named Tuttle. I was wrong in the first video, by the way. Um, Cyber Dreams made plenty of games. What am I doing wrong? Okay, hands, there. Not only did they make Dark Seed, but they made Dark Seed 2, which I'll play shortly after this, because this game is so amazing that I just want to put myself through an entire... Yeah, that did it. Amazing. Uh, they also did I Have No Mouth But I Must Scream, which was based on a short story written by Harlan Ellison, who's one of my favorite authors. Can't do anything with the caskets. Sealed shut to reverse freshness. Amazing. What's back here? But yeah. These guys actually made a bunch of games that I'm into just because they're so dark and strange and kind of science fiction-y cyberpunk. Um, but they aren't all that well... made? Just kind of like imagine like one of those fantasy knives that looks really wicked badass, but if you were to actually use it to slay a dragon, it would do a shitty job. That's how I view these games. Yep, great! Now you have Cousin Gary all over you. Okay. I'll take that. That's a legitimately funny joke. I mean, sometimes this game is so over-flowery with its prose. Yep. Now they're repeating the joke. Great. Um, well, sometimes what they do use for descriptions is just so complex, and it sounds like, like a freshman is trying to write it in creative writing. It just bothers me, but then other times they have really nice, simple one-liners like that, and it's perfect. I don't know. Maybe if they had another year working on this game, and maybe slightly better writers? <sighs> I'm just spilling ashes all over the place, it's great. But I know that one of these has to have something in it. <sighs> no Angela ashes? I just want Angela's ashes all over me. Ah, there we go. Alright. So we got the clock key. Let's get out of here. Oh, wait. Where the hell am I? Am I on the roof? Is there anything to do up here? Can I look? Can I touch? <laughs> you can't reach out and touch someone from here. Was that like an old phone commercial? I don't even know. You can barely see your huge house from here. Same thing. Is there any purpose to this, or am I just here for the view? Alright. Maybe this will come into play later on. I don't know. Who knows? Who cares? We got the key to the clock, and we're getting the hell out of here. Come on, Mike. Shake a leg. Back out of the old tunnel tomb. No time to look at any graves. I'm pretty sure it's getting later on in the day, and we do not want to fall asleep outside, as Mike is well known to do. Because we might not have noticed it, but Mike Dawson drinks steadily throughout the day just in order to deal with all of the shit that he has to go through, what with interdimensional beings and um, hoity toity librarians ignoring him. By the time 9 o'clock rolls around, he's pretty much wasted, and he's going to fall asleep on his feet. So, we need to make sure that he's leaving this back on his own property so that someone doesn't steal all of his uh, magnificent finds that he has, such as a pair of gloves, a crowbar, a bobby pin, a piece of paper, or a mysterious key. <sighs> Let's head back into the old homestead and figure out what the hell's not going on with that clock. And knowing clocks in adventure games is probably sort of, sort of some sort of puzzle. Let's go take a look. Come on, Mike. Quit tripping up. Hey. Nope, that is not what I wanted you to do, Mike. You gotta face your fears, Mike. Go back into the creepy living room. I know that you're scared of the paintings. But it's unfortunate that he wore those stonewashed jeans, because everyone can tell when you pissed yourself. You should really wear dark jeans like me, that way no one can know. Well, that's not the reason I wear dark jeans. It's, I just think that they look cool. Alright, let's open her up. I'm holding... 
is it? All right. Dedicated to John McKeegan for 25 years of loyal service. Huh. What kind of company gives out a grandfather clock for 25 years of loyal service? I thought it was like a pocket watch is what you got for that. Not an entire goddamn grandfather clock. But I'm sure we need to know 25 years for some reason and John McKeegan. Okay. Can I look at it? Can I do anything else? Nope. That's all we get. <sighs> what time is it? Is it close to the end of... You can't turn back time! I know, Mike. Quit shouting. What time is it? That's all I want to know. Oh, it's 5.18. Still so early. M. Well. Let's head into town. I know they don't have pizzas like you want, Mike, but there's probably a couple supplies we can pick up while we're there. We just got a few hours before you fall asleep from being so damn wasted. Yeah, that's a real reason we're heading out is head to him. He needs to get a fresh bottle of scotch, maybe some soy sauce, and uh, just about any of the other fineries that they actually offer in the Shit Heel department store. Not even department store, um, general store that they have in town. And I know how much... Well, I know that I enjoy this walk that we get to take between his house and the town. So, I'm gonna try and take you back and forth through this as much as possible. Because it's scenic, it's relaxing, especially with the soothing music playing. And how the road seems strangely empty and unoccupied. I know that that's your favorite part of things, too. So let's head back into Klug's. Thankfully, well, what can I buy here? I'm gonna do a proper mouse over. Um, so we got the soy sauce over here. What's this up here? Ooh, Russian sardines. Those might come in handy. And anything over here? No. What about down here? Ah, olives. Those are tasty, I love olives. Just about anything made out of olives. Ooh, what's that? Insecticide. That could definitely come in handy. Is that still insecticide? That's still insecticide. Alright. Uh, I just love the music here, too. What's that? Crackers? You know what? I'm gonna buy all of these things. Because I have my magic dollar bill that I can just pick up and give to the fella here. And the voiceover? Serve yourself, Mr. Dawson. Masterful. Oh, that's what I came here for. I just want to hear you talk, um, whatever the hell you... Who are you? Clerk. I came here just so I could hear you talk, Clerk. Alright, so we got the soy sauce. Let's give you some more money. Take my money, please. Damn it. Did I click you? There you go. Take it. Serve yourself, Mr. Dawson. Ah, it's music to my ears. Now, we will take some... What did I take? Sardines! Yes, I remember now. It's all come... Wait, I... Ah, I still have my magic dollar bill. Okay, there's that. I think I'll buy myself some olives. Serve yourself, Mr. Dawson. Olives! Gimme. Beautiful. Alright. You know what they say, a full inventory is a happy inventory. Wait. Oh. Oh no. Did I actually... <laughs> oh no. Oh crap. Oh mercy me. I spent all of my magic money. I thought it was gonna last forever. The only thing I actually had to buy from here was the scotch. Wait, can I just pick it up? I'm sorry, Mr. Dawson, but you'll have to pay for that. Oh no, I spent all my money on olives and sardines! No! After all the progress I made! No, 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 no! When was the last time I saved? I haven't saved. I didn't save a thing. I've screwed up yet again, this time on camera. Uh, well, what am I going to do now? Mike Dawson, I have a feeling we're going to be spending a long time together. 
because I'm gonna have to go back and do all that over again with you. Mike Dawson. Mike, you, at least you could do is dance for me. Thank you, thank you so much for dancing for me. You got some moves, I really appreciate it. Okay guys, this is poor Brenton. Um, I swear I'm gonna get through this game and I'd appreciate any kind of moral support you can get from me. And I'll try and screw around a bit less. I honestly thought that I could just buy everything in the store, even though I didn't need it. But the only thing I need is the scotch. Because I know that's important later in the game. But I screwed around. I apologize. I won't do that anymore. I'm gonna get through this game. And I... <sighs> they even kicked me out of the shop. You know what? Mike Dawson. He's he's at the end of his rope. He's so upset. He spent all of his money on olives and sardines. Ah, oh, the police station's even closed. I can't get myself arrested. Well. Thanks for watching. This is Port Brenton. Signing off. Telling you to have a great life.